ESPN 1420, ESPN1420.com. Welcome back into the Great Scott Show. Joining me now is a man who nearly 30 years ago became the youngest boxing heavyweight champion of all time at age 20. Plenty has happened between now and then. He'll be performing wow, his... Almost 30 years. That's huh? right. Mike Tyson. Yes. Mike Tyson uh, performing his show, The Undisputed Truth, at the Mari Showroom at Paragon Casino in Marksville on Friday, October 23rd. Mike is on with us now on ESPN1420.com. Iron Mike, what is up, man? Man, Scott, wow, 30 years. That just, um, that sounds like eternity to me when, I, when you say that. Because you remember when we were little kids and we, we saw somebody 30 years old? Man, he was like Methuselah. Well, you know, you're right. When when somebody was 30 when I was a child, they they, they seemed like a grandpa to me. But uh, if I'm 15 and they're 30, they're like, "Whoa, grandfather!" <laughs> well, look, you mentioned you mentioned uh, childhood in your show, The Undisputed, uh, Undisputed Truth. You kind of give a no holds barred story about your life. Take us back to your childhood, if you would, Mike, in, in the Brownsville section of Brooklyn. What was life like for for young Mike before boxing? Just surviving, man, the everyday struggle, yes, and making sure you're not kidnapped, killed, molested. It's just um, drug-infested, crime-infested. And, you know, sometimes when I think about it, you know, I, I go back and, um, and retrospect. I say, how did I make it from that place to right here? How does that happen? And, you know, at times when I go there and I visit, it's not the same place, but you just say, man, how do a guy from this place become me and it's just man it's just nothing but the grace of god you, you also discovered your love of pigeons at a young age i want to say age 14 a few guys in your neighborhood uh, tried to I was, hustle I was you like promote. nine ten so nine or oh. ten how, how did that come about i don't know so um i was um i was jipping i was skipping school because some guys were bullying me all the time and some other guys came and started um interrogating me and patting my pockets and making me carry wood up to the, you know, being like that little flunky. And they were doing it with pigeons. They had pigeons on the roof. And uh, they had really bad, and out of shape, condi- unconditioned pigeons. So the pigeons would fly once or twice and land on another building. And I'd be that flunky. And they'd make me go chase the bird off the roof and go to the store for them. And that's how I became involved in pigeons. Mike Tyson, our guest, ESPN1420 and .com. Mike, what, do you remember the first fight you ever got into? Yeah, over one of my pigeons. Somebody killed one of my birds, and I and I was scared, but my friend said, Mike, fight him. And I won't let nobody jump in, and I fought him, and I, and I, and I kind of won. I, I didn't really win, but I hit him more than he hit me, so I guess I won. All right. Well, well, that was uh, the first of, of many, um, just not in the boxing ring. You mentioned sort of just the grace of God getting you out of out of your childhood in uh, in that section of Brooklyn, Mike. How many times were you arrested as a kid? Hey, I, as, um, by the time I was twelve, I was arrested quite a few times, and um, I miss by the grace of God, I met a wonderful man by the name of Customato, and he decided that this is what I was going to do in my life, and um, I began boxing. How, how big of an impact did Cus have on your life, Mike? Oh, definitely. There's no doubt he was a hundred percent. Main influence of me succeeding not only in boxing but in life in general. What, what, like, what, what did he teach you about as a young man? Just as you said, not just, not just boxing, but about, about living. Just um, perseverance and never giving up, and always have the greatest belief and confidence in yourself, and um, just to know that um, the world wasn't built in a day. You know, whenever you want to. Um, accomplish something like being the best in the world or anything the best garbage can collect in the world there's going to be disappointments and you never get discouraged mike That's tyson just basically I, i'm just the guy that won't get discouraged there you go uh well espn 1420.com you mentioned almost 30 years ago and how it it seems so long ago what do you remember about that trevor burbick fight when when you won the the, the heavyweight championship at 20 years old how, how did your life change after that I just know this was it, you know. Um, wow, that's uh, that's a weird question. I just know this was it. Uh, it, it did, so, did how much did your life change though after you won that fight? Oh, um, hey, listen, um, it's never been the change the same since. It's never been the same since. Well, you were a uh, kind of a, a phenomenon from that point on around the world at that time, and 
1987, Nintendo released Mike Tyson's Punch Out. How much did you play that game, Mike? I didn't play that game. I wasn't into um, video games. Um, the furthest I went was um, Pac-Man and um, Space Invaders. But other than that, I really began playing video games 2005. But other than that, I never played games truly in my life besides the Pac-Man, Space Invaders. Did, did you get any royalties from, from Mike Tyson's Punch-Out? I don't remember the flat fee. I was <laughs> just a kid. I didn't know anything about business back then, like two million bucks. Wow. Uh, 1988, still a very young man. You, uh, you lost to Buster Douglas, uh, 42 to one underdog in that fight was Buster. What, what was your physical state and mental state like heading into that, that fight in Tokyo? Hey, my physical state was great. It's just that he fought a great fight. Do you, uh, did, did you still talk to Buster much after that? Do you get asked about that fight a lot? I, um, periodically, not much, but, um, occasionally it comes up. And I see Buster, um, not much. Um, the last time I seen him, he looked in good condition. But before that, he looked really bad. I saw in the magazine he had bad health problems. But the last time I seen him, I believe it was in some fights or, or autograph signing. And he looked pretty good. Mike, in, uh, you know, in, in the Undisputed Truth, I know you just tell a lot of life stories. And, and uh, in 92, when, when you were sentenced to prison for, uh, for rape, how much a part of that, a part of your life is covered in the Undisputed Truth? How much do you look at at the time you spent in prison and open up to the audience? Um, that? People that come to the show, they're going to see all, they're gonna see all that as well. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, Evander Holyfield, whether it be part one, part two, what do you remember most about those two fights? And, uh, and do you and Evander still, do you all communicate at all today? Absolutely. I've seen him on uh, quite a few occasions. And um, what I remember that he was sensational. What uh, what if you could go back? Would you change anything different about those fights? Maybe I wouldn't afford him right away. I got you. I would afford a couple of probably five more fights before him. Mike Tyson, our guest. Mike, your uh, your celebrity is undeniable, and it's taken you from the boxing ring to a lot of other places including the wrestling ring. What was it like working with, uh, with WWE and, and Stone Cold Steve Austin? One of the best experiences in my life. You can, yes, um, it was really good stuff. It was really good stuff. Is there, is there one thing that stands out to you about, about Stone Cold or, or wrestling, WrestleMania, or is it all just kind of one big grand thing? No, this is, um, this, this, this is big business. Um, this is something I learned. The wrestling's fake, but the checks are real. I got you. Uh, how did the one-man show, Mike Tyson, The Undisputed Truth, how did that come to be? I saw Chad Parmentary do a Bronx Tale. I, I, I was escorting my wife to go to the show. She loved this show. We saw her as we were driving up I-15, and she saw the billboard. She said, I love, I love that show. And, you know, if you know the show, you know the love interest of the black girls. All the black girls got really serious and cool off of that movie, I guess, you know, whatever it may be. But so she wanted to see the movie desperately, right? And so um, we went there and we were overwhelmed. We were just, man, we, we were dumbfounded for what, 90 minutes? We didn't say anything. People could have went in our pockets. We wouldn't have known it. We, you could have um, you could have heard a, you could hear a, a mouth piss on cotton. It was so quiet. Every word he said, we grasped it. And I was saying to my wife, I said, baby, I want to make people feel the way he just made me feel. And that's just how this thing started. Is that what listeners can expect when they, uh, when they attend your show on October 23rd at, at Paragon Casino? It's an emotional roller coaster ride. Yes, you're going to... Um, you're going to pretty much um, experience a great deal of emotion. You're going to probably cry. You're going to laugh. You're going to be ambiguous about certain things. And you're going to be familiar with the stories, but not familiar with the underlying circumstances of the stories. And you're going to really kind of get it. That's what I get from the guys when we go back to stage with the people who viewed it. And they get it. Mike Tyson, our guest. Uh, just a few more for you, Mike. ESPN1420 and .com. Which, uh, Who is your favorite boxer of all time? I don't know. Wow, that's just tough. Roberto Rand, I have to say. 
Roberto Duran, you just uh, you kind of related. Oh, there's so many. You know, I love Ali. You know, I love Sugar Ray Leonard, Robinson, Tony Canzanieri, Benny Lennon. You know, I can go a long list of uh, you know um, historical all stars. But you know, when I think about Duran, I, I reminds me so much of myself just being a raw street kid with no with no nothing. They have nothing, and you just you learn everything you um, know now from this. What's Iron Mike's favorite movie of all time? Wow. There's so many of them. It used to be the, um, the, the, the the other side of midnight, the dark side of midnight, but now I think it's um, maybe, I don't know, The Notebook is good, too. The Notebook is good, Point of No Return with Bridget Nils, um Bridget, Bridget Fonda, yeah. Underrated movie. Uh, Mike, I like that one, too. Uh, what's your favorite song of I like, all time? I like I like action, but I like love movies. With I, they have to have real depth. Okay, there has no depth. I you know I could see a phony love movie before before I even um, the headline come on. I just oh makes me sick. But but the, but the Notebook's got a lot of depth. That's why it's it's near the top of your list. Yeah, gotcha. What's uh, I know I'm asking you some favorites here. Which what's Mike's favorite song of all time? I don't know. Um, anything from Stevie Wonder. I got gotcha. you. All right, Mike, last thing I want to do with you, my friend, uh, we'll, we'll play word association. So I'm going to throw out the name of a person. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to throw out the name of a person or a thing, and you just tell me the first thing that comes to your mind, all right? Oh, no. Here we go. Customato. I don't know. I'm just a lot of dedication, hard work, sacrifice, and suffering. Roberto Duran. Inspiration. Don King. I don't know. Great promoter. Buster Douglas. Great fighter. Kiki Tyson. The boss. <laughs> the boss. <laughs> yeah, she's my, friend, my friends always say, ask me, Mike, you're not even 50, you've been married three times. And I say, hey, man, I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a creature of habit. Of course, you know, I'm, I've been, I'm, I'm so accustomed to possessing only half of what I've owned, so being married is just a cinch for me. I got you. Uh, Lennox Lewis. Great fighter. Frank Bruno. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. Tough fighter. Awesome guy. Yes, um, you know, I really respect Frank. I really respect that. Out of most of the guys, I think Frank is up there, man, with respect of what he's overcome. Having a whole country on his back, falling fat, flat on his face three times, and then coming back and succeeding, that's really what um, this world and this life is all about, persevering, overcoming adversities and all kind of, you know, you know, malignant ma- um, quagmires and stuff. Uh, Muhammad Ali. Uh, the greatest. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Awesome entertainer. Uh, pigeons. Great good guy, too. Texas boy. Uh, he, is, uh, he is West Texas, born and bred. Uh, what about uh, pigeons? Pigeons? Yep. Yeah. Um, man's first, best, man's first um, friend. Tigers. Excuse me? Tigers. Not to be, not to be kept as pets. I got you. Uh, two more domestic pets. That is, I mean, that you keep them in the house. You don't do that. Keep them in a the cage and have respect for them. Absolutely. Uh, Evander Holyfield. Oh, uh, man, legendary, legendary competitive spirit. And uh, lastly, on word association, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Yeah. Hopefully, um, before he dies, he become the man that he wants to be. The baddest man on the planet, Iron Mike Tyson, has been our guest. His one-man Broadway show titled Mike Tyson, Undisputed Truth, is coming to the Mari Showroom at Paragon Casino in Marksville on Friday, October 23rd. Tickets start at $40. They're available at LA One Market through Ticketmaster.com or by calling Ticketmaster at 1-800-745-3000. Mike, thanks for the time. I uh, I know you're busy. I know Kiki's running the show over there at your hey, place in Vegas. Hey, about it, buddy. She's a, hey, look, she's in spin class. We, we're running the show, me and the kids over here. All right. Well, uh, the best to you and your kids, man, and uh, we look forward to seeing the undisputed truth. Hey, take care, buddy. You got it.